Okay, good afternoon. Um, we have today with us a Christian Cruz, like Tom Cruise, but with a UZ. <laughs> Cruising, yeah. <laughs> UZ is your last name. Yeah, but the, the, the star is Tom Cruise, you know him, right? Yeah. Anyway, he is Christian Cruz, the future Tom Cruise. <laughs> but you, you're not an actor, you're more like something who does something down to earth, right? Yeah, I mean, pretty like, I'm a pretty humble person and, um, well, yeah, I started this like personal training job. When did you start that? This year? Last year in November. Okay. Yeah, so fairly new at it and uh, it's not really something I wanted to do like for a long time. It just okay. happened. It just happened to be that. Yeah. Did you have to be trained to be a personal trainer? Yes, through a course called NASM, which is a, it's an online course. N A S O M. N A S M. S M. Mm hmm. N A S M. And you take that on online? Yeah, online. And um, you go on about it at like, your own pace, so you don't gotta like, rush through it. There's no deadlines. How did they check you learned it? You gotta pass an exam. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. So. Is it exam about? Did you understand the movement, or is it uh, more an exam of um, body parts and stuff like that? Uh, both. Yeah, so movement and like anatomy too. Okay. And how long is the... Oh, you got your own pace? Yep. Okay, so how long it took you? <laughs> it took me uh, six months. Six months? Yeah. Okay, so like two hours a day? Yes, two hours a day of studying and uh, yeah, like for like three or five times a week. You would go online and learn. Yeah. Now, how do I know after you took those six months mm -hmm. that you are a good personal trainer? Well, that's a good question because it all depends on like the person that you are. You want to treat the client as a client. You want to like treat them as a friend. You know that's how you build rapport through them. But uh, I, I know you are very young. But how do I know that you are fit to be my trainer? Since it's all online, they cannot see you, right? You may as well put a picture of you. Mm. But how do I know you are? Um, do you do something in person also at the gym before you are a certified a trainer? Well, there's no like really any way of like proving it, like because it all depends on like your physique too, because that's what a lot of people take a look at first. Oh. Uh, but like in terms of experience, well, I do have experience prior to getting the certificate mm -hmm. through that uh, NASM you, course. You used to go to the gym a lot. Yeah, and uh, I met. Um, there's one member who we became close friends. Uh, his name's Don, and uh, he, he was a physical therapist in the army, mm. like for like ten years. Yeah, he, he told you a few things. Yeah, he, he taught me a lot of things that I didn't learn in the course, cause like he knew more stuff than what the course like taught you, because you know he actually studied the anatomy of the human body I in see. more detail. Cause yes. he was a medic too, so. You know, he, he got to learn more about like the physical and um, neuroscience aspects yep. of the body. Yep. There, is a, there is a personal trainer online who also teach fitness mm -hmm. because if you have good fitness, you don't need any more therapy, mm. right? Because your muscles are hard enough yeah. to withstand anything. But it, if you just massage, 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 it's not going to change anything. You have to build up your muscles too. That's right, yeah. You you probably have also watch your diet. Uh, absolutely, yeah. That's like eighty percent. Eighty percent is diet and doing it. Mm -hmm. Doing it too, yeah. Because uh, you don't need to spend that much time at the gym. Mm -hmm. uh, like thirty, like half an hour to an hour. That's where all your like strength's gonna lie on. Per day, you mean? Yeah, per day. Um, but what I'm saying is like for half an hour to an hour. You're burning up more fat and also testing out your like strength because after an hour you're gonna limit your endurance and therefore burn more calories so mm -hmm. depends on your goals you know a lot of people want to burn fat they could spend an hour at the gym 
over that you're just gonna burn more calories and also like um, build up your endurance which you know it's beneficial if you're like a runner or or somebody well that's to build up endurance you have to stay three hours at the gym to see if you can last for three hours yeah like, that's right like if I take two hour course uh, two different classes one hour one hour if I can do a third hour that mean I'm endurance I have endurance yes if I get tired after two hours I mean I'm I'll have less endurance like mm -hmm. f five years ago I would do three in a row and I would be fine and now I do two and I I say that's enough <laughs> hey, well, so what would you do no three hours like I would take the first um, cardio then the muscles the body pump or strength mm -hmm. and then there was a third class uh, let's say a body combat or body attack and I would take the third one but now after two I get I have less endurance is that age mm. Or is it because I my muscle is not as strong now? Yeah, because you're talking about the classes, right? The, the ones that like, you take at the gym. Can you stay three hours in a row? You can, yeah, because you're still building up a lot of endurance. And like, um, do you go to the classes every day or how often? No, do you no, go? just weekends. Just weekends? Also two days a week? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, so you have a lot of endurance because, yeah, that's like I can six do hours at least total. two, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I have to work on taking the third one, maybe. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, it depends on your goals. Like, for example, like, are your goals to build up more endurance or strength or both? My goal is to be strong. I mean, my, to, to have muscle tone. Okay. So I, my, my first, number one goal is muscle tone. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, as you age, you lose a little bit of muscle. And you have to eat more protein to keep the muscles strong and toned. Um, yes, yeah, that's right. Uh, as you you are much younger, mm -hmm. you probably can eat carb and it's okay. You can burn it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so because you know we have faster metabolism and yes, we grow older like uh, weakens. Yeah. And but you could always like build up to it with like strength training because. Um, like the classes that you were referring to earlier, they're pretty fast paced. Yeah. So, uh, you know, for strength building, like I, I think it's body combat, right? I don't know, the other one. Um, strength training is body pump. Body pump, yeah. Like uh, they do use weights, but at a very fast pace. Mm -hmm. That's what I noticed from the classes. And going slower is better. Yeah, going slower is it's way better. Like within 30 seconds to a minute. Uh, it's funny because with my clients, I don't really count. Mm. the number of reps and they uh, say I'm like wait are, are you lost like what number are you on <laughs> like no I didn't forget it's just like I'm trying to I'm keeping track of the time because you know your mind can play tricks on you if like the weights are too heavy you're gonna count faster you know you're gonna wanna count faster but um if you don't count then just like keep uh track of like the tempo oh the, four like, seconds usually like pace yourself pace yourself uh yeah, you're gonna build up more muscle and burn off fat easily. And um, I know you you're very young, so you have a lean stomach. Mm -hmm. But as you get older, the muscle kind of. kind of, <laughs> the the muscle kind of expand a little bit. Yeah. And to keep them toned, it's more of a challenge than when you are in your twenties, right? Uh, because the muscle kind of open up a little bit. <laughs> oh, I get what you mean. Yeah, like um. As you're building up strength, you're like, you begin to like expand. No, uh, it's just that if you don't exercise the the stomach enough, the muscle get relaxed. Oh yeah, so I mean, we're we're constantly training the the core. Is that what you're referring to, mm -hmm. right? The core. Yeah, like um, even when you're using the machines, mm -hmm. if you don't like lay back. And just like lean forward a bit um, mm -hmm. you're still gonna work the core uh-huh like um, push-ups push-ups yeah uh, deadlifts where you like carry the the bar from the ground. oh yeah like, yeah and we do up. that we do that yeah that one's really good for toning and yeah you mentioned it earlier that's that's what you want right Tone one. yeah but I do it only one hour a week <laughs> <laughs> so but you do it uh, more like uh, you said one hour a day or, yes or half an hour a day yeah, half an hour sometimes, like depending on the exercise, like 
a deadlift, you know, that's about like half an hour, it's like four or five sets. Half an hour, four to five sets, okay. Yes. And then the machine, you know exactly which one to go to? Yes, I do that at the end after like a compound lift, which is like uh, double jointed um, exercises, like bench press. Oh, you, you do have a routine of your own? Yes. What is your routine? Tell us. Well, um, I first start with like mobility. With the arms? No. Um, mobility, stretching. Cause stretching, I stretch okay. before What do you exercising. do? You stretch like a plank? No. No, I just like do some uh, dynamic movement like swings oh, or... Oh, okay, warming up. up. Yeah, warming up. Um, like I use the bicycle sometimes or treadmill, elliptical for five to ten minutes. Okay. Yeah, I used to get my body warmed up and stretched. And then you can work on them? Yes, so I start with like the compound lifts, the, the two um, two joint movement exercises with like heavy weights, uh, a lot of free weights I start off with first because uh, after I move to the machines, just to like isolate each muscle group and allow it to, to grow and stretch more. Uh, how do you decide which muscle you need to work on more than others? You look at your body in the mirror? Uh, no, I just like, depends on how I feel. If like one muscle's not too sore, then I'll work on that one. And yeah, I used to have like a routine and all, but uh, sometimes the best plan is no plan. Oh. <laughs> Cause uh, you know. You do what you feel is right for you that day. Yes. Okay. Do you know that game Battleship, the, the board game? Mm -hmm. uh, so Don, the guy that I talked about earlier, mm -hmm. Um, the army dude, yeah, he, uh, I would work out with him. That's where I got my, like, experience from, too. Yeah. And he would always say, like, oh, you know, whenever you're lost at the gym, just think about that game, Battleship, because in that game, there's, like, two monitors on each side, and then the person on the other side gives you the coordinates to target the enemy ships. So when, when he was talking about that, like, I don't know if, you're starting to get the analogy, you like to target, you gotta like target the muscles mm -hmm. to have them like grow, you know, so. Yeah, it depends if it's like not sore or not, then you can work on it, but. um. So every day is gonna be as you feel about it. Yeah. Okay, so if one day you wake up and you say, I need to work on my stomach, you, work, you do that. If you feel that your legs need a little bit more strength, you work on the legs. Yeah. And then, oh, sorry, and then you also walk a lot? Uh, I do, yeah. After, uh, I like to uh, walk for like an hour. Oh, from uh, the gym home or something like that? Yeah, gym to my house. Or, or do errands. House the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you do your 10,000 steps per day? Uh, not always. Like, usually like four or five times a week, yeah. Oh, okay. Because I, I do like to rest a lot because, you know, the body needs to recover. So Two days a week you recover, like today. Yes. Yeah. Today is your recovery day. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow you have clients so you cannot recover. Uh, well, hopefully I'll be recovered by tomorrow. No, right. but tomorrow is not the day you recover because you are going to work. Uh, oh, I guess, Unless yeah. you don't have appointments. Yeah, oh, which I probably... Because tomorrow's Saturday, right? Yeah. I, probably, yeah. I don't think I have that many clients tomorrow. Cause so it could be a semi-intense day. Yes. And then Sunday is your day off too? Yeah, Sunday's my day off and then... And then you start again Monday through Friday with your half hour routine per day, except Friday. Yeah, except Fridays. Okay. Now, how do you keep up with your diet? Do you eat at home or you, you tell whoever you live with, uh, don't serve me that? <laughs> <laughs> I uh, meal prep um, every... Oh, like, you do? Yeah, like every Sunday, I meal prep. It's like, I add like a lot of lean protein, like chicken or okay. ground beef. So mm -hmm. you don't let whoever's cooking in the house serve you? Uh, sometimes, because I'm not really picky about my diet, I, okay. I'm not that strict about it. Cause, okay, so uh, you can eat uh, beans and rice and it won't affect you? Yeah, no, not really, because uh, I guess I, like my metabolism is like... Burns it? Burns it faster, because... Because uh, if, if I eat um, 
let's say a burrito, mm -hmm. I would gain one pound for sure because it's a lot of the oh, rice is 600 the rice is 600 calorie per cup and then the beans are a lot of calories plus whatever else they put in there mm -hmm. like the sauce and everything so i watch i make sure that i don't eat that <laughs> but at your age it's a different ball game right you can burn it real quick i mean <laughs> well it feels like it sometimes um you know because you want to overeat Okay. Um, especially once you're like once you know you're gonna work with the clients to, in a week or so <laughs> right yeah but um, yeah, I'm not that strict about my diet I, I do like tend to eat whatever and then you know that, that's why I work out <laughs> okay <laughs> now like food. when when you finish your six months training online mm -hmm. not in person so let's say you take two hour online today would you take one hour in the gym to practice what you learned yeah like I would like uh, teach some friends uh, like train them it. yeah yeah just to get some like experience before training actual clients so that's what I was doing is like training friends okay Family so members, in yeah. between class you would practice what you learned yeah yeah the gym okay and then when you got your certification online mm -hmm. after six months you want to see the manager of the gym and say, oh, here is my certification, hire me. And they say, let me see what you can do, right? Yes. They do see the actual thing. Yeah, they assess you. Okay, so you did the different movement in front of whoever hired you, and you say, yeah, you can do it. Yeah, in front of the manager. Okay, how long is that test? Uh, it was an hour. An hour, you have yeah. to show him different settings. Yes, yeah, different, like, observes, up, observe his, like, movement pattern, and they just, like, correct it, gives him pointers on what he needs to work on. Oh, to strengthen, the, yeah. so they see how you handle the client? Yes. Yeah. I see. And now, when you talk to a client, you ask them what they want to work on, right? Uh, yeah, you ask for their goals first, so... If they say I want to have a stronger uh, butt or a stronger stomach, then you're going to do more exercise towards these parts of the body? Yes. So, for example, they say like their goal is just to like, lose weight. Mm -hmm. I would have them do strength training exercises because that burns the most fat. Okay. And yes, if they want to like grow bigger arms, like I, I'm just, like. Then you would work on that. Yeah. Now, what I noticed, uh, I mean, not me, mm -hmm. in general, a lot of bodybuilders or a lot of trainers, they have very strong top mm -hmm. and very thin legs. I mean, they don't work the legs enough. Uh, you have seen that uh, that before? Yeah, I mean, I, I did train my legs. Uh, you do <laughs> train your legs? Okay. Uh, and no, when you, you do those oh, <laughs> No, because you do walk a lot. Uh. Uh, not really. I not really. Okay, take the you, bus a lot. <laughs> you you run? Uh, sometimes, not, not too often. Like maybe once a week or twice. Well, I guess it depends on your body type. Some people are born with thin legs, and some are born with thin top. Um, yeah. So you want to balance it out, right? So mm -hmm. you look at your client. Yeah. And you assess what how, what they need to balance in their body. Yeah, because some people have like a less dominant side of their body. Yeah. And like some somebody has heavy lower part, or another person might have a heavy top part. Yeah, they have more. Might have more muscle mass on like the less dominant side than the more dominant uh, side of your body. And the way to like test that is to uh, try an in body scan. Okay, so you mean one side of the body is more muscle than the other? Yes. Oh, really? Yeah, like for me, like I used the in-body scan last week at this like supplement store, uh, Max Muscle Nutrition, the, one of like, the gastro. Okay, so let's go on that. So let's say one person has a thinner leg than the other. That means they're not working the other leg more? They're doing more compound lifts and accessory slash like isolation work. Which is like, you know, like that day I assessed you, I had you do the, the lunge. Yeah, yeah. The one foot forward and the yeah, other yeah. back. Uh, Did yeah. you notice one leg was less muscle than the other? Uh, for me or for my client? No, as 
when you saw me, did you notice that one leg has less muscle than the other? Uh, I don't remember. It's been a while, but I think it was yeah. your left leg that needed more work. Okay. Um, and so well, let's say you notice that one leg needs more muscle. What mm -hmm. do you do for the client? Uh, have them like still do those uh, isolation type of exercises and to strengthen that particular leg yeah okay or like stability work too because that's like isometric work and isometric is like oh you call yes yes so you have you're stable like you can stand on one leg or the other yeah yeah you're like testing your body's ability be ability to be, be stable adapt to that yeah so yeah, so that's very important. They say if you cannot be um, balanced when mm -hmm. you do these things on one leg or the other, like when you lift your your lower uh, your lower leg down the back, it means that <laughs> you closer to death if you cannot <laughs> balance yourself. Is that true? Um. There was a there was a doctor who said that uh, as you get older, you have less balance. And if you test the patient, he can predict, by the way, the patient balance themselves how many years they have to live. Well, how do they test them? Well, they ask them to stand on one leg or the other, I guess. Or they ask them to lift themselves up. I don't know. Oh, okay. So if they find out the person is a little bit out of balance, they think the person have lost balance and strength. And then they can predict how long that person has to live, unless they go to see someone like you, and you can reverse that, correct? Yeah, you can like help correct it, and like I said, like strengthening it too, because. And then they can get their balance back. Yeah, yeah, with strength. So, um, like for older people, you could still help them out through strength training exercises and machines. Like machines are safer than using the free weight, especially okay. for older clients. They can have a balance with the machine. Yeah, they, they're a lot more safer. And Okay, someone comes to you and say, I want to run the beta breaker in May. Mm -hmm. He has two months to prepare. Do you tell him to go around the city every day? <laughs> <laughs> um, or do you tell him to do something else? Well, because I the beta breaker is, let's say, seven and a half miles. Mm -hmm. And they need endurance to finish. Some a lot of people do three miles and they they walk the rest of the time, the rest of the race. So to finish the seven and a half miles, they need to to be able to run a longer time. Yeah. So, so how do you they build that? For that, I have uh, two clients who are like runners. They're planning on like running the. the beta marathon. breakers and the SF marathon in August and the beta breakers in May. Yeah. Yeah, you know about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, go to enjoy both. It? I go to both. Yeah. Oh, no. So, so if one wants to finish with the rest of the runners, mm -hmm. what do they have to do? Because the SF marathon is twenty six miles, mm -hmm. and the Beta Breakers is seven and a half miles. So, Beta Breakers is much easier because most people walk it, <laughs> <They don't, laughs> except the people in the front. They run it. But to finish it, it's a different ball game. They have to finish it if they want to start at the Embarcadero and finish at the beach. Now, to finish it, what's your advice? Because the beta breaker is coming soon. Oh, have them train with me more often. <laughs> and uh, I where, where can they find you? You are at 24 Fitness? Yeah, the one on Van Ness. Okay, so they can contact you. They ask for crews and they say, I want to do the beta breaker this year. Can you help me? Yeah, first I will assess their form. Yeah. So, like, I don't know if you remember when I did that, like, overhead assessment with the stick. Okay, yes, I remember. And I point out the parts of their body that need the most work. So, yeah. for runners, you know, focus on lower body. Yeah. Um, but do you tell them to run, like, 20 blocks a day? Uh, some advice that I would, like, give them is, just, like, yeah, go on a hiking trail, you know, it's like... Uh, on the weekends? Yeah, build up your the stamina. Muscle. Yeah. Uh, yeah, muscles, too, because, you know, you're going to be doing a lot of walking. And yeah, up and down in San Francisco, especially on Hayes, it's up uphill, you know. Yeah, it's very hilly it, here in the city. Yeah, so to do the beta breakers, a lot of people stop at Hayes Street because it's uphill, and it makes 
the person more tired. It's not flat. <laughs> oh, yeah, no worries. So on the way back, it's downhill, but on the way into the beach, it's uphill. So that, <laughs> that makes you slow down on your speed in the race, right? Is that the, the last part of the race or the middle? It's the middle. That's why a lot of people stop at the middle mm -hmm. because it's hard at Hayes and Steiner to go up the hill. And like by stopping, do they just like quit the race or do they still? They just, they, they're still in it, but they go slow. Oh. I mean, I mean, most people at that point in the middle of the race, they just walk the rest of the way because it's not really a competitive um, event is as you wish. But most people would like to finish it at least. Because aren't you paying for it too? No, only the professional are paid. I mean, they get prizes like a car, they get a trip uh, by airmail. Cool. And those people who are professionals and they arrive within, let's say, a 30 minutes for, or they arrive what, less than that. Well, like finishing the race in 30 minutes? Yeah, from the beginning to the end. They, they can do it, those people, because... They practice a race daily and they know they are professionals. But the amateur, which are the citizen of San Francisco, they mm -hmm. do it for the fun of it because it's also a masquerade. They dress up and they start at Embarcadero, they have fun, they meet friends. It's, it's not the same as the professional who are starting in front <laughs> and they are taking it seriously because they want to win all these prices, right? And also they want to be number one. Most people race because they, they want to they want two, three. Yeah, they want to be number one, number two, number three, gold, bronze, uh, silver, bronze. So those people take it so seriously, they practice every day and they don't miss a day. Well, so for them, they, like people like that, I will train them a lot in, with cardio uh, based exercises, so hit training. And also strength training, like a little bit of that, because you don't want to strengthen your like knees, your tibs and calves, all those like underworked muscles. Mm -hmm. um, they're very important. Mm -hmm. And also, most athletes are under a very strict diet: no fried food, no pasta. Uh, they eat every day fruits and vegetable. Uh, maybe less fruit than <laughs> and more vegetable. They, they have a very strict diet, no carbs, whatever. They do eat carbs because they, they burn a lot, mm -hmm. but they don't eat all the sauces that most people are accustomed to. They don't eat junk food like Cheerio, Cheetos and uh, candy maybe bars. Maybe once in a while. <laughs> maybe once in a while. Maybe once, one week, uh, one day a week, they would, uh, take uh, maybe a candy bar or they would take something like a, a piece of cake but the rest of the week they have to adhere to a very very strict diet absolutely yeah because they're so you, you do career. you do you take your diet seriously no <laughs> no no I don't really want to compete for anything at the okay. moment okay um, I just want to, because I was, back then I was 185, so I was like pretty... Pretty made. heavy already? Yeah, heavy already. Uh, and now you're 160? Yeah, 160, and yeah, because, yeah, I was like, I think I reached almost 200 at one point. Really? Because your mother fed you a lot of burritos? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or I, I would like eat a lot of junk food after school, so that was really? unhealthy, yeah. Oh. Junk food after school, that's a good one. Uh, that's when you were like uh, in high school. <laughs> yeah, yeah, high school time. Mm. And also, when you study, it's stressful, so you gotta eat. Yeah, I didn't like school at all. Uh, like, I'm not going to college right now. Like, uh, I think it's like a waste of time because there's more opportunity out there uh, like now yeah. even without a degree. Oh, of course, of course. So you want to just catch up with everybody else by doing what interests you? Yes. Yeah, and, and your main interest is fitness? At the moment, yes. Like maybe down the line, I'll look in, more into like law enforcement. That's something I want to do this year. So, oh, okay. Life. So you don't know if you're going to like it or not. Uh, I do enjoy it because you got to treat the gym as a hygiene. That's what I tell everyone. Because you got to make it like a daily aspect 
like the gym, life for you? I mean, the gym is for all professions. I mean, mm -hmm. even if you are a manager or if you're a financial analyst, after work, you go to the gym, right? Yes. Or before work, you go to the gym. Mm -hmm. So that's a routine you can keep whether you are professional or not. Right, yeah. Now, past that half an hour a day or one hour a day, to do it as a job is a different story, right? It's a different ballgame because then you have to be at the gym a little bit longer to meet your clients. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you just don't want to stay at the oh, gym all day because okay. it's the same face every day. It just gets too repetitive. I mean, okay. it depends on the person, you know. For me, I... I am social. I just like, I like to be, um, you know, more change. Yeah, you more change, more, more focus. Change. You, but if you go into, let's say, um, personal um, private investigator, mm -hmm. then you have different cases. Let's say every month, and that's more exciting than just one client every month. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, when you have a client, do you concentrate on their case particularly, or you don't know if they're gonna show up again? <laughs> mm. Well, f we always start with a fitness appointment just to get them to sign up. Okay. You know, some do, some don't. Okay, and then once they become, and they say, yeah, I'm gonna commit for one month, let's say. Then, then you take them more seriously? Yeah, you create a client folder for them and then keep track of their progress with height, body fat, wow. Uh, percentage like where they're at in their mm -hmm. journey are you their as goals. a personal trainer allowed to counsel on nutrition uh no i don't have a certificate in that but i can just like provide like um general rules yeah general rules because uh yeah, it's not that hard you know just calories in calories out Mm -hmm. um, yeah but uh, different people are of different needs some are diabetics some are have a lot of cholesterol some have heart problems so you have to take that into consideration yes and I'm not like uh, certified, certified yeah okay so I know that some people in some gyms are nutritionists as well so then they can advise on the nutrition part of it yes yeah, some gyms do offer like both options I'm not sure if ours does yeah I'm pretty sure it's like they do if you have a certificate if you have both certificate, the nutrition and the trainer? Yeah, but we don't have like any like specific guidelines for nutrition. Because I know some gyms do like even offer massages. And, you know, we, we oh, don't. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no massages. <laughs> no. Like 24 fitness for sure. <laughs> yeah, we have, remember, uh, I was giving this client a massage. So we set up like those like platforms, the ones inside the room. Yeah. Inside the Zumba yeah, class. Yeah, but that's not your cup of tea. <laughs> no. <laughs> This is like funny because... Oh, just for fun. Yeah, it was just for fun. But. Actually, one time somebody at the convention offered me, you know, a trial massage and I took them to the gym room, you know, the exercise room. Mm -hmm. And he did like 15 minutes uh, because I had pain on my hip. And, it, and that's something you do if you have a particular need, right? Yes. And if you're like more specialized in that area, because some people don't really know where to target when but massaging. also as a personal trainer as opposed to a massage therapist you're not allowed to touch the client no yeah, yeah. I didn't touch my client it's yeah like a the massage therapist that's the opposite he has to touch his client yes and the nutritionist he has to look at what you currently eat what vitamins you take and then see where you can make corrections exactly yeah like if you tell me what you eat now mm -hmm. i would say you look pretty good you don't have any stomach you, your legs are pretty muscled and your arms are okay so i probably won't have that much advice to give you unless if you <laughs> want to build more muscle you see more protein <laughs> but pretty okay. much now you're exercising enough so that you're okay you don't need more yes yeah, yeah. i feel like a lot more but i still want to be mindful of like what i eat cause okay you know, all the ingredients they add in our food nowadays, who knows? Just for overall health. Overall health and keeping a sane mind, you know, because... That too, the mental is very important. Yes, yeah, I agree. Eat fish uh, for the brain. 
Right I on. mean, there are ma many foods that are good from one part of the body or the other. Yeah, so every, also I, every plant. I, what, what do you think of all these people who take protein powders, you know, before a workout because they want to build muscle with the protein? You Do you adhere to that? I take it after, like before working out, I usually take like carbs, some complex carbs, like, you know, bananas, uh, apples. But are you for the shakes? Yeah. Oh, you do? Mm-hmm. Those are pretty expensive at 24 Fitness, right? Yeah. Like a hundred bucks for a bottle? No, they raised the price on those. Oh, really? How much are they now? I think they're like 80 bucks now. Wow, well, for like a week supply? A month. A month supply, that's okay. I mean, I think back then it was like 60. Okay, <laughs> so it's, uh, it's people who take really their muscle building seriously would buy those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if your main focus is to build up strength, then yeah, you want to buy those. And it, it helps in getting that extra protein when you know. But do you digest it okay? You digest it okay? Yeah, that's fine. But some people are allergic to soy yeah. or milk, so yeah. So you don't do milk. <laughs> no, yeah, you could do almond milk or like, water. <laughs> like if you don't like you intolerant to dairy and gluten, you be, you gotta watch what kind of uh, protein powder you're gonna pick up, right? Hmm. Yeah, because they sell plant-based proteins. They do? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for vegans and anyone that doesn't, uh, you know, is lactose intolerant because most protein, like whey protein has uh, dairy. Yeah, yeah. Do you build, do you do yours with regular milk or you do oat milk? Regular milk. Yeah, so you're not lactose intolerant. No. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Like now, that. one more thing I want to touch on before you go is... What I noticed about some people who train mm -hmm. is that they're also, when they get too big, all of a sudden, all of a sudden it's not b beautiful anymore. It's just too big. It's a turn off. What do you think about that? Well, you know, there's people that use enhancements. So it does change your body to be more like, so, so the, I think they call it like uh, the bear. Yeah, the, the thing, yeah, uh, the, yeah, the traps, muscle yeah. there, yeah. No, but it's not attractive to a woman to see someone that looks like the green hawk, you know? Mm -hmm. It's not attractive. Why do they do that? Well, usually people, they, they just like to... Increase build more them. and more? Yeah, people just want more. They want to see where their uh, body's <laughs> limit is at, how far oh, they can go. And then they got to deflate like Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> yes. And then, and then if they deflate... Uh -huh then they have extra skin that they have to do to remove surgically. Mm -hmm. And as you grow older, you know, you lose testosterone, so it's like, it will take longer to like, get rid of that like sagginess. Yeah, so it's better not to build too much. Mm. Well, it all depends on the person's uh, goals. Yeah, but if you see you're, you have enough, mm -hmm. shouldn't you stop? You probably won't want to stop it. You, you oh, like you like it. Yes, you like people it. Can become addicted to the gym. I remember, really, really. Yeah, I remember a member said, asked me if that's like true, and I, because her nephew works out a lot. Mm -hmm. Like back then, he did it, and he would go every day. Yeah, he would go every day, and I mean, I'm starting to go every day too. Like I did not, because yeah, you just built a habit of it. You you treat it as a routine or or a hygiene. You know? But uh, even if you do it as a hygiene or routine you don't want to increase the weight so you look like ugly right like too big <laughs> you want to do lower weights uh, so it doesn't get your muscle don't get too big yeah yeah i mean you gotta have on your drive you you because some people say i'm gonna increase maybe one pound this week or increase in in a month three two pounds but that's not good because all of a sudden you're, you become like a balloon that's inflating, right? It's better to keep the same weight so that you don't look bad, ugly with all these extra muscles. What do you think about that? Uh, I think... Unless you know, you're competing, of course. Yeah, unless you're competing, but you could treat it like, uh, like an aesthetic look. So, you know, some people are like, thinking of growing their traps yeah. like, like the game yeah. i mentioned earlier yeah. battleship yeah you target the specific muscles that you want to grow okay and if you see one i've grown enough you stop 
Yeah. That you could stop or still go go training more because just to keep it toned. Yeah, just keep it toned and also build up more strength. Okay, because but, you started early, you're only 23, right? Mm -hmm. If you keep on doing half an hour a day, you might get bigger. And you don't want that because they say when you get bigger, you get you look shorter and shorter, right? But <laughs> in, in your case, you don't want to get that big. You want to look balanced, right? I, I do kind of want to get big. You do? <laughs> yeah, and then just like tone down after because oh. uh, I want to build up my numbers at the gym that's like what everybody's main focus is like oh how much can you deadlift but don't you think you uh, that you enough toned uh, I want to see where my limit is at where my what, body's what would be your limit to get a little bit bigger so I'm like 160 maybe if I get up to like 200 you mean you, you also want to build volume yes oh, oh interesting I mean, uh, yes, and so then I'm, and then you want to deflate? Uh, well, hopefully not like deflate not too completely, much, yeah, not, not too much. much. <laughs> yeah, and, and do you find that, uh, not just to talk about attractiveness, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think women are more attracted to someone who's bigger or just normal? Mm, well, ma you mentioned earlier that that's not your thing, but, you know, some girls no, but, are different. But, uh, but, uh, but your perception of, personally, I prefer someone who looks normal. But it's possible that from the point of view of a man on himself, he thinks the bigger, the better. <laughs> right. And, and that might not be the right thing to do. Uh, like, it's it's weird, though, because, you know, for guys, they don't want, like, a muscular woman. You know, some don't, some do. Oh, yeah, yeah. A woman don't, she doesn't look good uh, when she's too muscled. <laughs> Yeah, because, like, you know, everybody's mind is, like, different. Like, people just want to test their body's limits, and they get, like, addicted to the a process. Routine. To yeah, the their routine. routine, and they just want more and more. That's just how humans are. Oh, yeah, yeah. They had uh, a woman. She, she retired at 65, mm -hmm. and she had nothing to do, so she would go two hours a day to the gym. And two years later, she looked better than when she was 18. Oh, I thought you were going to say she took steroids. Because when she was 18 and she was working, oh. she didn't have time to go to the gym. And now that she's retired, she has two hours a day to go to the gym. So all of a sudden she reversed the aging process and she became looking better and better and better. Until two years later, she looked better than 18. That's what the gym does to you. It does change you physically and mentally. It does, it does, it does, it could change totally your body, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, for you, how did you start it? I started just for fun. I mean, I just started for fun. I go to the class, I listen to music. That was fun. Oh, like have you met people there? Have you socialized? Or? A few, I, 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 you know, because I see them every week, then I'm friends with them. And then... Have you interviewed them here? Never. Really? I'm like the first one from the gym? From the 24? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, why haven't you invited more guests? Well, um, I did when I was not at 24 hours of uh, fitness. I had uh, one who did his fitness class live mm -hmm. in the private studio, not at the 24 hour fitness or at any other gym. He, we did it in a private setting, mm -hmm. and therefore it was allowed to, 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 to air it for him. But he did bring uh, three or four of his friends to be in the class, and we taped it, and it was great. Mm. It was at the studio of Mary Poza. And what did you guys talk about? No, no, we didn't talk about it. He brought, he did the actual class at the Mary Poza studio. Oh. In the, the because we used to be at another location, mm -hmm. I mean, at the Folsom Street location, and we had a huge studio. Oh, bigger than this one? Yeah, we had a floor where we can do dance or exercise or everything. So he did it there in, on Folsom Street mm -hmm. and it turned out great. Oh, that's good. It's yeah. just like people who want to do their own video series. They do it either in a beach setting or in a studio setting, uh, but not in a studio owned by somebody else. They do it in their private uh, space. This way they don't owe anything to the company. 
Right, because you can rent out this place, yeah, like the... No, I mean, we don't rent out here. But what I'm saying, when someone wants to try uh, an online series, mm -hmm. they don't do it with a, a company like 24 Fitness or SF Fitness because that's then owned by the company. You got to do it in your own private space and then you can market it if you want. Oh, and that's how you started, right? No, no, what I'm saying, I'm talking about people who want to make a living selling their routine. Oh, oh, I see what you they mean. They don't go to a company, they do it in their own private space. Or they, if they offer a class online, they don't do it at the company place, they do it at their own place. Because mm -hmm, it's like better... No, this way they don't have to pay anything to the, to the company. And they get like m most of the cut. Right, exactly. That too. That too. Because 24 Fitness does have online classes, but they own the classes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, like they brought yoga back. I don't know if you saw. Yeah, yeah. I've seen that. Sunday at 12.30. Oh, uh, sun this Sunday? Yeah, this Sunday at 12.30, there's yoga. Oh, I'm a go, for sure. You like yoga? Yeah, I like it. Uh, I used to work at uh, SFMTA, uh, the Muni department. Yeah. And they had yoga class every Wednesday. Saturday. Yeah, and at uh, like this and on Vaness, they have a man teaching it Sunday at 12.30. Mm. I haven't lo looked at his uh, class yet. Usually yoga is taught by women, but this one is taught by men. Yeah, because the one that I went to was taught by like two ladies, but then one of them got pregnant and she, she was really good. So she like moved out the city and then she wasn't that intense. Like, it was like, because, you know, when you think of yoga, you think of, like, meditating, you know, like, peaceful. Mm -hmm. So the pregnant lady, I, I, I enjoy, enjoyed her style because... And then I she like had to stop that, for a while, yeah. Yeah, he had to stop, and then I quit the, the place. and But the last uh, lady that taught, for like, the last uh, couple of weeks I was there, she was super fast-paced. Like, that, that was her style, and... Yeah, I like Sometimes sweat a lot. You cannot, yeah, you sweat a lot. And yeah, it was fun. I yeah, liked it. Yeah, yeah, because hatha yoga is a lot makes you sweat a lot. I mean, it's hard. Yeah, but I don't know how this guy's style is. The one well, I, I we'll find out Sunday maybe together. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're going? I'll try to stay till twelve thirty because my classes end at eleven. If I want to <clears throat> take that one, I have to stay. Mm, like or come back. Or come back. Yeah, you can do that. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I think I'm going to join just to try it out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, men's style is different also than women, right? I mean, um, a man teaching yoga is different than a woman teaching yoga. Mm, I haven't experienced uh, like yoga with a guy. He is like uh, women only stronger. I'm this stronger. Uh, yeah, they're probably going to have you do more like... They can, he, the men can do a headstand or they can do the... Oh, I can't do a headstand. <laughs> oh, no, but the teacher can. Oh, this guy? No, the, the man teacher can do more than the women teachers. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah I mean, you know, men do have more strength than women. As exactly, so they can do more difficult exercise. Yeah, we'll have to see how, how this guy teaches. Uh, I'm excited. When did you take your first yoga class? Oh, it was like two years ago. And you like? I liked it a lot, yeah. Like the first lady, the pregnant lady, her mm -hmm. style was like slow, patient, you know. And then the other one was too quick. But and did you fun. take it for meditation, mental health issues? Or did you take it for the, just to check it out? Meditation. Meditation, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why people take it to, get, to get, live in the moment. <laughs> And stretch too, because uh, I would do it after the gym. Oh, yeah, yeah, we need to stretch. Uh -huh, so that felt like nice, you know, an hour of doing that. And yeah. Yeah, so now let's say you're 23. By 30, you think you'll be a little bit bigger. Well, who knows? Time will tell. But, hopefully. but usually they go a little bit bigger. Yeah, yeah I hope I, I grow bigger. Like, that's my goal. That's your goal? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right but on. you look at yourself in the mirror every day and decide if you want to keep going, right? Yeah. Yeah, it depends on what I want to work on. It depends uh, if you're happy with the way you look or not. Yeah. Yeah, it uh, plays a big role. Then if you keep doing it, like half an hour a day or an hour a day, whatever you decide, at one point 
you'll become a better and better trainer? Yeah, because you pick up and learn at the gym. That's how I met Dawn. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I also learned a few stuff from other people at the gym. Like the members there, I'm like built a good rapport with them. You know, we're good friends. One of them's a trainer at uh, SF Fitness. So he taught me some things too. And even the veteran trainers at the gym at 24 Hour Fitness, um, yeah, there's this guy, shout out to Daniel. He like taught me a lot because he's been working there since like 2016. And yeah, he's the one that encouraged me to become a trainer. Really? Uh -huh. No, it's true that in the military it's much harder than in a uh, gym because they teach you to go through, like firemen, they're taught to go through narrow areas. So they go down on, on the floor and they, they they have to get in to yeah. learn how to, in case they have to save someone f from a fire, they have to learn how to go on on the floor and get in. And that's a different kind of fitness, uh, the the yeah. fitness of being able to squeeze in and all that. Yeah, they're like training boot, boot camps. Uh -huh. Boot camps are different. Yeah, there's also boot camps uh, on, the, on the beach, right? Boot camps, you heard about them. Mm. And outdoor, yeah. outdoor boot camps. Yeah, I heard of them. Yeah, and I know a lot of like law enforcement agencies do that, do those courses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they learn different things than in a gym. No, that's true. Yeah, they learn a lot from those training sections. Hmm? Oh, and uh, how are we on time? Yeah, we are doing good. Oh. We are doing great. So yeah, I gotta. Leave yeah, soon. you're almost done. It's it's 51 minutes now, so I can go as much as 50. Oh, it's been an hour already. 51 minutes. Oh. I bet I can go as far as 58.30, 58 minutes, 30 seconds. Mm. But you... Yeah, should be good. I can wind it up, though. Um, so I think uh, we touch on some aspects of personal training. Mm -hmm. And if there's something I didn't touch on, let me know. Uh, well, that's about it. I mean, we talked about, like... The training routine, the nutrition, a little bit of that. Boot camps. Boot camps, yeah. Yeah, like if you're going to be trained as, um, let's say, a fireman or something, it's going to be a different training for you. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, because they go through more like... Cool they have to things. climb and they have to go under and they have to carry heavy equipment in their back. That's I've, different training. I, I tried one of them before, like uh, two years ago. They offer like a free, uh, free training seminar. Just really? To see, yeah, just to like see how the actual course is, and it has you like jump over a wall, okay. run around some. Cones. Is that hard? Uh, it was at first. I mean, like for me, it was the first time. I it wasn't that hard, but the other candidates they were struggling on jumping over the wall. Mm, Some but of them you were chubbier. Oh, they were chubbier, <laughs> but you're still still young. Uh, yeah, I was 18 when I tried it, and yeah, I had a lot of strength to climb over that wall. But that's not the kind of job you want to do? Uh, yes. You would do that? Yeah, this was for the police department. Oh, police department is also different training, yes. Mm -hmm. So, once I apply for the real thing, you know, the wall is going to be much higher. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, and also now you're better prepared for that because you have some experience at the gym, so you're stronger. Mm hmm yeah that's um because back then i was one you know heavier like 185 so i was pretty overweight and now you can do it better yeah, well, yeah we'll see i mean i'm sure i can yeah at the uh, fort mason you can take a climbing class uh that's a different kind of a strength too to be able to climb a wall oh and what's it for people like to climb it's a climbing, uh, and then they go... Oh, it's a climbing gym? Yeah, it's a climbing gym. Oh, and what was that, Fort Mason? It's at Fort Mason, yeah. It's oh. a climbing uh, gym, and you Is learn... Is the one that has, like, then, a bar? Yeah, the, uh, no, and then they go to the real mountain and climb. They, they, but before they go to the mountain, they, they do it in a closed setting. Oh, I see. See, it's for people who are into climbing. Do you, do you like climbing? I did it when I was younger. I mean, no, I don't. I don't no. personally. I prefer swimming. Swimming? Yeah, Sw swimming's cool. I haven't done it in a while. Yeah, swimming, there is no impact. 
the water flows with your movement. Mm -hmm. You don't, you never hit a wall. You never hit. You don't have to go up or down. You just go with the flow, actual flow, because <laughs> water is a flow. <laughs> so it's much easier. Yep. Yeah, because climbing takes a lot of effort. You got to beat the uh, altitude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And plus, Gravity. you have and and also the balance. You don't want to fall down and hit yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we bad. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so it's a different kind of training. Um, also, if you're a fireman, you have to go maybe to the top floor of a building and you gotta learn how to climb. They teach you all that, yeah, through the boot camps. Yes, they do. <laughs> so anyway, it was a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, I'm sure you, you'll decide year by year what is your real calling to be a trainer or a climber or policeman or fireman. So you'll decide a little bit later what's your real calling. And that's what I've been thinking about lately. So I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens this year. But As if you get taste to be a, yeah, a <laughs> trainer or if you acquire taste to be something else. And how did you find out that you wanted to do this? Uh, this show? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know I wanted to do it. I met another producer and he told me there is no show for your community which, which at that time was the French community so I started with the French American TV and then I did other shows I did all about your profession which is the show you on now mm -hmm. so I talk about someone's profession and different field I don't talk only about trainers <laughs> <laughs> depend of the person I invite profession so people can decide whether they want to do that profession or not and I have another show because it's called What's Your Idea? So people who have startups can tell us what the idea is. And what's um, one startup that you uh, interviewed? What startup? Yeah, can uh, you talk about it? Yeah, I interviewed so many startups. Um, so the last one I interviewed is a French man and he wrote a book about um, how to be a, a good project manager that compiles all his years of experience into one book. Oh, nice, cool. So, so he, he has his is, book, right? Yeah, he has his book out. It's called um, The Delivery Man, how to deliver a product, uh, how to deliver a product uh, with less effort and managing a team and all the problem you encounter and along the way. Yeah. So he, that, but that's not really an idea. That's, uh, but he has like, I think, 10 patents of ideas. So we didn't talk about each of these ideas, but he is the one who did, you know, when you go on chase.com or ch there's Zelly. Zell? Zell. Mm -hmm. He did that one. And because he used to work for PayPal, you know, payment oh, online. Oh, cool. So he did the Zelly one. So he's a salesman, right? He's no, no, he did Zelly because he's a technology man. He oh. he did the coding. But he is giving his like ideas and like and tips then, and on then the book, no, right? he gives his idea and then they make it real. They make it the product. Oh, so he creates the the blueprints for the product. Exactly. So people can actually use it. Mm. Yeah, and then I had the... Uh, and it's like tech-related only, right? It's tech-related. And sometimes I have ideas that are not tech-related. Uh, the same day I invited a woman who tell, tell us what kind of entrepreneurship she was into. Mm -hmm. So, like, as soon as you have an idea, you can start your own company, right? <laughs> yeah, he's got a patent at first because you don't want nobody else yeah, to see it. Yeah, that too. Or you can just start a company and when you see it takes off, then you can protect it. I mean... Amazon was an idea that started with just books and then became er every product in the world. So That's it, true. it can evolve. That's very true. So we'll see what your idea is going to be. Then we'll <laughs> invite you again on the show, right? Oh, definitely. Yeah, I'd like to come back. Okay. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, I look forward to tape you and you show us some of the things you teach your clients. And uh, thank you for your time today. Oh, thank you very much, Eileen. I really appreciate uh, you inviting me to the show, and yeah, I mean, I look forward to, to watch, to see it, <laughs> yeah, to see it, and uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's it about will it. it will air on the channel twenty nine. Twenty nine. This is uh, it, it usually airs Saturday at six, but I don't know 
You can ask her when she's going to schedule this particular one, and she'll tell you the date. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can also text me too, right? Oh, yeah, you can ask her now. But anyway, thank you so much. Thank Have you. a great day. And you too.